So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we can make a Joker movie. Okay, okay. Is he gonna get the word very added to his damage tattoo? Oh, no, 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 no. Not that version of the Joker. Completely different Joker. But if he doesn't have damage tattoo on his forehead, how are people gonna know that he's damaged? Oh, they'll know it. Don't you worry about that. The whole thing's gonna be an origin movie taking place in 1981. An origin movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people love the Joker, so I figure we could show his origin story. I don't know. I I feel like one of the things that people love the most about the Joker is that he doesn't really have a clear origin story. There are a lot of YouTube videos theorizing about that. Yeah, and we need people to make theory videos about our movies. Well, you, uh, you really care about theories, huh? Yeah, I do. I mean, they're essentially free publicity, and I do not like spending money. Oh yeah, you hate that. I do. I just feel like if we give the Joker an origin story, it's gonna be tough for YouTubers to, you know, come up with theories. Actually, it'll be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, these these YouTube people can make theories out of everything. Here, have a chat with my theory guy. He'll put your mind at ease. What? You have a theory guy? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, um, hello? Hello? How can I help you? Hi, hi, uh, if I told you we were making a Joker origin movie taking place in the early 80s, is, is that something you could work with? Hold, please. Joker origin movie, early 80s. Got anything for me? Yes, sir, I do. God, that's what I love about you. Fast as lightning. That's why you pay me the big bucks. I actually wasn't aware that we were paying you at all. I just take it out of your wallet. Oh, petty theft is tight. Hit me with those theories. Well, maybe the whole movie is taking place in his head. That's a classic angle. Fantastic. Or maybe we could say that Jared Leto's Joker took on the mantle of this 1980s Joker. That would probably get us a lot of anger clicks. Those are great for the view count. Or get this, maybe the Joker is Batman. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say no. Let's dial it back. That is going way too far. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoopsie. Hold on. Hello, yeah, we can definitely work with this. Oh, amazing, thanks for your time. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Nice talking with you. What a nice guy. I'm keeping your phone, by the way. I like it. Oh, that's so mean. So what actually happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna follow this guy, Arthur Fleck, right? And he has this thing where he laughs uncontrollably in inappropriate situations. Oh, I have that with smiling. Me too. Wow, 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 wow. So anyway, Arthur's having a really hard time. He works as a clown, he takes care of his mom, and he has several mental illnesses. Oh, what does he have? Uh, you know, just the vague kind we can use as an excuse for violent outbursts later. That's probably fine. So Arthur just wants to be loved and make everybody happy, but people are super mean to him and the system is just beating him down. What system? The system. Which, which one? Oh, don't get me started on the system. Could you get started? I'd love to get a little deeper on that. No. Oh, dang it. Suffice it to say though, we live in a society. Oh, why didn't you say so? That's steep enough for me. So yeah, for a good chunk of the movie, we're just gonna watch bad stuff happen to him. You know, he gets fired, some kids beat him up while shouting beat him up. Oh, very appropriate dialogue. And then at one point he's in a train with clown makeup and these banker dudes start harassing a woman. That's not very nice. But then Arthur starts laughing so they start harassing him and let me tell you, these guys know all the lyrics to send in the clowns. Wow, how convenient that they had that in their repertoire. Yeah, and so they start beating him up and he kills them all. Oh my god. Yeah, and then he runs away and he dances. Oh, he dances, huh? Very creepy. Well, I'm glad you like it, cause it's gonna happen a lot. Oh, it is? Yeah, laughing and dancing accounts for about half the runtime. Wow, so what else happens? Well, Arthur is also an aspiring comedian, and he's obsessed with this late night talk show host who he's convinced is gonna give him his big break. That, that sounds a whole lot like that Scorsese movie, The King of Comedy. Uh, crap, you've seen that, huh? I have, yeah. Right, okay, so full disclosure, there's a whole lot of that in this movie, and also a fair amount of Taxi Driver, if I'm being honest. What do you mean there's a lot? Are you just straight up lifting scenes from those movies, or are you, like, paying homage to them? Well, I mean, you know, that depends which one of those doesn't end with a lawsuit. The second one. Right, okay, so the second one then, it's it's a mirage for sure. You know what, just to make that perfectly clear, let's get Robert De Niro to come play the host. Okay, great. So anyway, one night Arthur ends up trying stand-up comedy at an open mic and he can't stop laughing. Right, because of his thing. Because of his thing. And then Robert De Niro plays the footage on his show because it's so ridiculous. He got footage from an open mic? Yeah, well, I mean, it's 2019. Everybody films everything these days. Well, I mean, people don't really film open mic sets of unknown comics. Also, isn't this taking place in 1981? Okay, well then let's just say that somebody brought a very 
expensive, very bulky camcorder to an open mic and film the whole thing for some reason. Pretty sure camcorders only hit the market in like 83. Okay, okay, so somebody brought their Super 8 film camera and then, and then got that film developed and then sent that into Robert De Niro. Well, okay then, a very convenient filmmaker. Oh, and also Arthur finds out that Thomas Wayne is maybe his father, so he goes and, you know, sticks his fingers in his little brother's mouth. Man, DC villains love sticking their fingers in people's mouths. Yeah, they do, but he's gonna find out later that maybe Batman is not his brother, so then he, you know, smothers his mother with a pillow. Oh my god. He also has this whole relationship going on with this neighbor of his. Okay. But towards the end of the movie, he goes into her apartment and she's all scared that he's there, and she's like, your name is Arthur, right? You live down the hall. Oh, okay, that's a nice subtle way of letting the audience know that it was all in his imagination. And then we're gonna have a Fight Club flashback. Oh no. Yeah, we're gonna flash back to every moment they have together, and we're gonna reveal that he was actually all by himself. No, I get it. Like in Fight Club, I'm miraging that one too. Well, okay, I guess. So how does the movie end? When does the big CGI sky beam come in? What? Well, it's a comic book movie. Where's where's the sky beam? There's not, there's, there's no sky beam. Oh, you're crazy, man. I guess. So what does happen? Well, Arthur goes on TV and, you know, pops De Niro in the head. Yikes. And that sparks this big riot where everybody's dressed as clowns. Very cool. And then in the midst of that, Thomas and Martha Wayne are gonna step out of a movie theater and walk down an alley. Oh, are we doing this? You're dang right we're doing this. We kind of have to do this. We kind of have to do this. So then we do this and pearls go flying everywhere. Oh, doing this is tight. And so yeah, then Joker becomes like this symbol and just basks in the glory of this movement he started. Wow, 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 wow. Or maybe he didn't, you know? Maybe he imagined it. What? Yeah, maybe it's all in his head. Who knows? Oh, okay. So what do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a good movie. I'm just a little worried about what kind of message we might be sending and what kind of stuff we might be glorifying. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, okay, then I won't. Hey guys, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. Big thanks to Matt Pat from the Film Theorist channel for collaborating on this. And I actually collaborated on a video on their channel too about the Joker, so you could go check that out. While you're there, be sure to subscribe. They have amazing videos, very detailed theories. They are a ton of fun to watch. Definitely check them out if you haven't already. You can also let me know in the comment section here what other movies you'd like to see pitch meetings for. Don't forget to like and subscribe here and check back soon for a new video. Bye bye.